Like, okay, I know why it's scary. Because we don't need people aspiring to be Jake Paul. I'm so sorry, I came for his brand. Hi everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome to my channel if you're new here and uh, welcome back if you have been here. Okay, sick. Today we are gonna be talking about the, I guess the like, I do not dream of labor trend. If you are not on TikTok and you are not uh, like a YouTube fanatic, this trend kind of blew up like in the winter time, I guess I would say. And it was like the sound of like, I, like, I do not dream of labor. Tell us, what's your dream job? Darling, I've told you several times before, I have no dream job, I do not dream of labor. So I am going to be reacting to, I think her name is Kath, okay, her YouTube name is Kath or Out. And this is the video that was like always put in my recommended page, so I'm gonna react to her video. And I felt like I could come at this like trend, I guess, or like do a reaction to it, because I come from the perspective of someone who has been on a gap year for now for a year, and I am like ready to go back to school. Like I'm so excited to go back to school. And I do, I don't know if I have a dream Dream job, but like I really love what I study and I think that could just be an interesting thing And I'm definitely not coming from like a place of hate like for this trend Like I don't I don't know a whole ton about it So I thought that that would be a good fun thing for us to do together So let's just we're just gonna start part on something that I think has been causing a lot of grief for many people Which is what exactly are you supposed to do with your career and to jump right in with a piping hot take? I'm here to tell you that maybe you'd be better off with that one I have my trusty girl bossy journal here in which I've scratched down a few notes But really I just want to speak to the transformative power of reclaiming what a career means. Okay, like first first part of this, like I, I, that's perfectly reasonable to like just talk about it. If you're watching this, first of all, hit the thumbs up. That would help me out a lot and subscribe if you'd like. Um, but if you're watching this, your YouTube homepage may look a little bit like mine in that every so often a video trickles in there invalidating the idea of a dream job. And I have really enjoyed listening to their very personal reflections on that. And I want to add to that discourse in support of all these other great folks trying to liberate us from a life of servitude to companies. I was born and raised in the Bay Area, which is a very work-centric culture. I I think it gets characterized that way a lot. I never consciously saw that as an- That's so funny because if you go to all of my videos, I was just talking about this with my family, like I call <laughs> DC like an academically pressurized area. Like literally go back and watch my old content and like take like take a shot every time I say that because that's like the nice way to put it. But like it's it's like hustle, it's like the hustle culture of like like here, like everyone's trying to get into a good school and like it, it, it it's a lot. And like, I definitely agree with that. Like I think when it gets like to a point where it's like unhealthy, I think it's just like anything in your life. Like you gotta have good slices of the pie. Like there's that, you know, the one, the influencers talk about it. Like the pies, the pie of life. I'm, I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna put it in. Healthy thing growing up, but what it does do is imbue the youth of Silicon Valley with the intense desire to go to like an elite four year college and then get a very prestigious brand name job, which greatly impacts the mental health of literal 13 year olds it's that are true. stressed about their future and their potential and how successful they'll be instead of just exploring and having fun with friends. Like, I was definitely like concerned about that when I was a kid. Like, I, I, uh, but then I also did like a lot of fun stuff too. Like, I did musical theater and like I was involved in like creative stuff. Like, I wasn't so hyped focused on getting into a good school because I think that like and I got I was like a good student and I think that if you do opt to like not kill yourself and like not sleep and you know you do what you're capable of and you do the best of what you're capable of like we still end up feeling like failures and I feel like that's just like such a that I agree with her right there where it's like it's such a messed up like part of this where it's I don't know it's it's just like it's hard to feel like a kid and like even when you are in those moments of feeling like a kid like you still have those moments of anxiety because I don't know like success is just it's always looming around the corner Everyone just wants to be successful, but um hot take you're already successful if you just you know Do what do your best and not like society's best, you know, because that's that's sometimes all you can do is just your best and As soon as I graduated I plopped right into the corporate track and was a happy little lemming just charting my course And I remember very distinctly like six months into it being like I don't know if this is for me I don't think I'm qualified. I don't think I'm competent here. Like I don't know what I'm doing I just don't think this is for me like I felt a core misalignment with what I was doing and I kind of just chopped it up to like Okay, this is how everyone feels like you just have to keep going at a certain point It'll settle out and you'll start to realize that nobody knows what they're doing and you just have to figure it out as you go But I think yes, I think that what she's saying here is really really true Confidence in like your job or like what you're doing like doesn't come easily I will say pretty much every internship I've ever started I've been like really nervous and felt like I wasn't qualified and then the more that you do it The more you feel like no, I like I know what I'm doing 
doing. I think that there is a part of starting a new job or an internship or, and I haven't like actually worked like a real person job, but um, I worked for 10 months this year in one company. So like I have like somewhat of an experience with that. And oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. This is why I don't make reaction videos because I forget everything. You, what she was saying like your core misalignment. She, she makes a good point. Like you should question that. Like if you're doing a job and you're like, I don't, this isn't like, you know, sparking any like joy in you or, you know, passion. Like, yeah, I, I think that's good to question that. I think after a while that initial like nervousness and not being confident or feeling like lost in the job. Like I think that that is normal, but I think there, there will come a certain point where it's like, if you're down the wrong path, like you should question that and try and change it if you can. I remember going to the Netherlands and it's like, if you ask someone, you know, what they do, they'll answer, oh, well, I'm a cyclist, I'm a father, I'm a writer. And then maybe the second to last thing would be like, and I'm an accountant. But in no way is their labor and their job the formative part of that identity. Like they don't center that in who they are like we do in the US. And call me loony, but like, I think it's very plausible that their happiness index and their distance from their jobs as their identity is linked. That does not sound unbelievable to me. So I spent a lot of time over this past year taking in a lot of different perspectives about work and different point of views about success and career orientation and all of that. And I really enjoyed like learning how other people define these things for themselves. And in that sort of informal, self-study, if you will, there are a lot of dangers that people speak to of tying your job directly to yourself, your worth, your purpose. Because here's the thing, like amongst the dangers are the potentiality that you'll lose your job. And if your entire self-awareness is centered around a job and then you lose that thing at the core. So okay. I think that this also has to do with school. And I think that this can make a really interesting point of why people like who are lost and don't know what they want to do or don't know what they want to major in. Like why I think a gap year could be good because being, <laughs> being a 20, being like an 18 to like, I actually, I don't know when it's going to get better. Being an 18 year old to now, like you have so many like existential crises. You're like, who am I? Who, who is, who are they? Who, where do I fit in? Like you do, you have so many existential crises. And when you are a person who's not sure about your major or something like that, when you're in college can be very overwhelming to try to like figure that out while you're, and if you lose it too, like if you want to change your major, like, and like, what does that mean about me? But like even people who do ha have their major, like they're just questioning everything too, which is like, I think the point of why I wanted to make this video, because I think that this applies to people going to college and people picking their future. And I think that it's so hard to know when you're 18 human necessities. A lot of people want to start a garden. A lot of people want to devote their life to art. I know a lot of people that would love to become therapists or social workers or devote themselves to some very giving field, but they can't because the debt that school would put them in in order to get that degree and be able to work those fields is inescapable. And so they just can't do what they want to do. Like there's so much we're limited by. So I would ask yourself, like, if you didn't have to work 40 hours a week, what would you fill that time with? And that's a really wonderful way to reset on what your internal passions are. Alternatively, you could also ask yourself, what would you spend your retirement doing? That's really, really sad and bleak that we feel like we have to wait 40 years just to be able to do what we want with our lives. Like as if you're, 40, 50 year career is an exchange for like, I don't know, 10 years of retirement where you get to be free and do whatever you want. Well, and I think that this is really interesting too, uh, just to talk about, because I think that like trends like these are not helping. And I'm not saying like, I think that this girl has the best of intentions. Like I really do. But I think that it's this kind of conversation, which like I've had this conversation so often, like I am this girl. Okay. But I think that this is really contributing to like all these like Gen Z kids, which I'm a Gen Z, but everyone's like, I want to be an influencer when I grow up. And that that is definitely a scary thought. I don't know why it's scary. It's just like, okay, I know why it's scary because we don't need people aspiring to be Jake Paul. I'm so sorry, I came for his brand. Oh, he's never gonna see this video, so it's it's fine. But we just, I feel like that's maybe something that like we don't necessarily need. Um, it's like millions of kids aspiring to like prankster life. I don't know much about Jake Paul or Logan Paul, except the controversies. So I'm, I'm out of my realm, but you get the, you get the, you get the picture, I guess. Your fulfillment. Another helpful way to frame this is like almost in the shape of a thesis. I saw Where I Live talk about this in a video, but when I speak about my life's work, my life's work isn't selling software. Like that's not my life's work. That's not my contribution to the world. Like my life's work, when I think about it and I really journal about it and get into my <laughs> meditative bag and be on my Pisces bullshit, my life's work is showing up for my friends. It's showing up for my community online, in person. It's indulging in creativity. It's exploring outside of myself. Like that's how I want to define my life's work because those things- Well, and I think that this part is like really cute. I just like love, not cute. <sighs> I just, I just call everything cute. Um, I don't mean that in a condescending way. Like I think the people do say it in a condescending way, but I just like, I think that it's, I think that's like how, how most humans feel that there are just like 
all of these things that we don't figure out and I definitely have felt this way. This year I probably had too much time to focus on the other aspects of myself and honestly like I'm ready to get back to work but I feel really solid and it's gonna be interesting and I want to do like updates of like when I go back to school this you know in a month like keeping up those parts of me that don't have to do with work and how do you sustain that in a life of like having a career but also doing the things that you want to do and the other things that define you and I think that it's just balance and uh you know I don't I I, I don't know what kind of job this girl had I selling software that sounds terrible I would I would also make a video like this if I sold software but for some people, like their life's work definitely is their work, you know? And I don't think that it's not like ev everybody can't have the perfect job. I know that I've had jobs that like, I and I'm, 21 like what do I know about the world literally what but I have had jobs that like I loved so much and I would go back and do them in a heartbeat and then I've had ones that make me want to bang my head against the wall and I think that sometimes it just has to do with the fit and you know what gets you out of bed in the morning and I think that you know for some people not that can't always it can't always be work you know sometimes it's just circumstantial that you're you know at this one moment in time you have to pay your dues and be in this one spot I don't know there's also a lot of media out there that can really help you almost see these issues from a distance, you know, like a bird's eye view. I watched Industry on HBO last year, and it definitely rides the very thin line between satire and genuine writing, but it is a very delicate, sophisticated satire of my generation entering the workforce and the perils that go along with a highly demanding job. It's not even cartoonish as a satire. That's why it's really hard to pick up on the fact that it's a satire, because it's not blown out of scale. It's hauntingly, like, relatable. Like, I know people in that lifestyle, and I was very close to being in that lifestyle, so I recommend that show as a nice way to kind of like allow you to take a step back. I also love the Cottage Fairies YouTube channel. She completely broke away from civilization, period. And she's living out a lot of our dreams of just moving to a cabin in the woods and rebuilding and being in your own self-sustaining ecosystem where nobody else is like placing demands on you. Like she's living out that dream and she is so mindful about her thought process and shares that all out. So I recommend her as well. And I would love to see more media like that, you know, normalizing taking a gap year in the middle of your career, normalizing gaps in a resume. Normally, 40 years is a long ass time to pick something at 22 and then just stick with it. It actually- And I don't think that most people do only do one thing for 40 years. Um, I think that that's definitely like more common in the generations above us. But I feel like as a Gen Z, like millennials have sort of definitely, what she's saying is true, like carved the path of like switching things up because I definitely don't know what I want to do for the next 40 years of my life. And I think it is a good, totally good thing to question it. Um, if you are one of the magical few that genuinely feels like your work is in 100% alignment with your life's purpose and your vision for your existence, freaking kudos. I just personally don't even want to accept that expectation because I think it's a losing game for me. I think if I'm just searching for anything that's going to give me everything, whether that's a person or a job, it's unrealistic. And that's where I'll leave you. I think that she makes a good point. <laughs> You know, she's very, she's very convicted. Um, I, I appreciate that because I find it very hard to express very strong opinions online. Um, so I just, I give her the utmost respect for just laying it all out there. Uh, yeah, I think that she's, she's right. I mean, I think setting the expectation that you're going to have a perfect career or one that, you know, you get out of the bed every day and you're like, oh, I can't wait to go to work. You know, that might not, that, that, that's probably not realistic for everybody. I don't think that that means that you should stop searching for it though uh, or have hope because you do have to work for the rest of your life and why shouldn't that be something that you really enjoy and you know if you are doing something that you absolutely hate try try something else try something else that you might love I think that giving up on the concept of having a job that you love is definitely not um, going to be a good solution I, I don't know I, I I see I totally see her point but I don't think that I don't think you should give up on that because I think that that is that's cool and that's fun and like I really love what I study in school like and I don't mean that like do I love taking tests no do I love writing papers? Not really. Do I like working hard and when I complete something and I know I put a lot of work into it and I get a good grade on it or, you know, it propels me to another situation or, an, you know, it propels me forward, I guess, into growth. Like, I I enjoy that. That definitely makes me feel good. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that, you know, not putting your whole entire self-worth into something is, she's right, just for, for a person, this is what I was saying earlier, like, that's totally valid and true. You know, I think a lot of people really do enjoy their jobs, and uh, I don't. I don't think it's so black and white. I guess is what I I want to say. It goes for anything. But if you're so entirely set on one thing happening for your life, like you're you're entirely set on having 
having a successful career or going to a school that's gonna make you look a certain way. I think that a lot of times we get caught up in how something makes us look and not how something makes us feel. And uh, it is really important to pay attention to those things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe, to post new videos every Thursday, but like this video if you liked it um, and leave a comment down below what you think about this trend because you guys always have like interesting insights for um, other people to read. So please leave that all down below and thank you so much for watching. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, ba.